So MLB The Show 22 is a week away from releasing, which means everybody wants to know what are the best settings in MLB The Show 22, the best hitting settings, pitching settings, fielding settings. In this video, I'm going to have you covered for the most part for MLB The Show 22. Obviously, I don't have the game yet, so I will have to make an updated video day one the game actually comes out. But for the most part, a lot of these settings are not going to change, so I can give you a good idea of what settings to change in MLB The Show 21 that you could translate over to MLB The Show 22. So if you're excited for this one, do me a favor, hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button seven days away from early access of MLB The Show 22. I cannot wait, but I hope you all enjoy the video and let's get it. Minica, watch me on Twitch. Ooh, I'm streaming. I'm on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Red button beaming. Let's get that sub count. Take over YouTube. Ooh, we teaming. My content so high. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Red button beaming. All right, everyone, so we are on MLB The Show 21, and like I said in the intro already, you can still use these settings for MLB The Show 22 on day one. As soon as the game comes out, I will be updating all of these settings, the pitching, hitting, fielding on day one but in the meantime while i'm making those videos use these settings for the majority nothing is really going to change only two settings i think in the hitting settings that are actually different from any of the other settings that we saw in the 22 tech test so you can still use all these settings be completely fine the only thing that will change in the hitting is the pci anchor but i'll talk about that when 22 releases in the full hitting tips video but we are going to start today's video off with hitting and again if you guys are new to mob the show and you're coming for the presentation of the game it obviously looks great we're in yankee stadium right now we have Aaron Judge at the plate you can see the entire stadium you can see the entire batter's box you can see Aaron Judge his six foot eight frame you're going to be able to see the crowd obviously when they're in the game right now we're in practice mode so you're not seeing the crowd but you can see everything right in the hitting settings that we have right now and again these are the default and you can completely go with these these are fine you can still hit the ball you can still see the ball but if you want a more competitive edge if you want to be able to see the ball better and you don't care too much about the presentation you're willing to sacrifice that a little bit the hitting settings that I'm going to give you is basically going to get you right into the strike zone you're going to see the difference i'm going to compare the default with my hitting settings that we're going to take a look at right now so now we're going to take a look at the actual settings for hitting here i'm going to walk you through each individual setting here explain what they all mean and then that way you guys get a better pci better camera angle and you're hitting the ball better in mob the show so we are going to start things off with hitting difficulty now if you're playing online this isn't going to matter this is only against play versus cpu games if you're playing online for the most part it's going to be all star if you're playing ranked seasons in diamond dynasty it can go up to hall of fame or legend but again if you're playing against the cpu this is the only time hitting difficulty matters so you can set it to whatever you want if you want on dynamic that's fine or whatever you feel like you're best at the top right now is legend and the easiest is going to be rookie and i think they added a couple more difficulties so you might be able to go even lower than rookie we're not going to talk about difficulty too much but set it to your liking when it comes to hitting difficulty and again that's only for offline games then we're going to have hitting view and this is super important again fisheye was that default that we were just looking at i like to go to strike zone here and i specifically like strike zone 2 i know a lot of people like strike zone and strike zone 3 i like strike zone 2 and really quickly i'm going to show you guys what strike zone 2 looks like you see how much closer the strike zone is compared to what we were on fisheye right now we are inside the strike zone basically we're going to have a way better view of where the pitch is coming. It's going to look a lot bigger and it's going to be way easier to track the ball here when we're on strike zone two compared to the default setting of fisheye. So that's what I'm going to go with. If you want to go strike zone one, I think there's a little more zoomed in and then strike zone three is a little less zoomed in. So fit it to your liking. I like strike zone two. Next thing we're going to talk about is the in play view offense. Now dynamic is nice. That's where we're going to see those nice no doubt animations. And again, this is great if you like the presentation aspect of MLB the show, but I like to play a little more competitive so I go to medium in play view you can also go to high I know a lot of pros play on the high in play view what does that do exactly as soon as the ball is hit off the bat if you're playing on dynamic you're going to see it from the hitters point of view if you're playing on medium basically the camera angle is going to follow the ball and high as well if you're playing on medium and high you're going to have a better look of where the ball is actually going to land so if you're going to try to stretch a single into a double you have an idea if you should go for that next base if the ball is going to be caught if it's not going to be caught so that's why I like to go with medium but I know a lot of pros play on high as well i like medium a little more presentation aspect rather than high ball trail is only available if you are playing on dynamic in play view offense so if you're using dynamic i would suggest turning that on but you can't do it for medium or high hitting interface no doubt about it you should be using zone over directional or pure analog that gives you permission to your pci and that's going to allow you to actually make better contact with the ball if you don't know what pci it's basically this whole yellow thing that you guys see on the screen the pci is used with your left analog stick you're supposed to move the PCI to where the ball is 
going to be. And if you connect that swing timing with the PCI, you are going to hit the ball way better than if you're playing on directional or you're not using the PCI at all. So definitely use zone. That gives you the best ability when you're actually hitting to make the best contact in the game. So we're definitely going to be using zone as you're hitting interface. Input type, I like to use buttons. If you want to go analog, essentially all you're going to do instead of clicking X, you're going to flick the analog stick up. I like to use buttons. I like to use X for the normal swing, square for the power swing. And again, I'm on PlayStation. So fit that to Xbox and switch according to your console. Analog type, we don't have to touch this if we're on buttons. So I'm going to stick that with flick. That's going to be completely fine. Then we're going to have our PCI indicator and you can completely customize this. Obviously, we are going to leave this on. That is going to allow you to make the best contact with the baseball so again you want that on and like i was just talking about you can completely customize this to your liking i'm going to give you guys my settings right now so center i leave it on circles inner i change it from basic i change it to wedge and then i don't like an outer if you use an outer and an inner it's not going to hurt you but i like to get rid of some of the distractions at the plate when you have the outer it's just a little too much for me so i get rid of the outer i use none pci color yellow is okay you can change whatever color you like they have yellow orange red magenta violet blue ocean cyan green a lot of colors spring green black white yellow ton of colors i leave it on white here and i like to keep it at about 75 to 80 percent transparency here if you put on 100 it's going to be too solid and it's going to blend in with the baseball so you're not going to be able to see the baseball especially if you're using white because it's the same color as the baseball and if you keep it too low percentage you're not going to see the pci at all so i like to leave it on 70 80 percent transparency and because i'm not using an outer on my pci the pci fade out is not going to matter to me if you are using Using an outer you can use the fade out and get rid of the outer so if you follow those settings these are going to be your new hitting settings this is what it's going to look like when you get up to the plate you see it right now it is a lot more zoomed in the pci is a lot tighter no distractions it's straightforward you're able to see the pci very nicely and you can see the baseball which is the most important part so let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the hitting settings next we're going to move on to the pitching and the fielding settings which are a lot easier than the hitting settings those are definitely the most customizable settings in the game for hitting and the most complicated now pitching is pretty simple now this looks pretty good you can pitch from behind the mound but again i like to change my camera angle from where they have it as default so we're going to go to options we are going to go to gameplay and then we are now going to go to pitching so pitching difficulty again kind of like the hitting difficulty if you're playing against the computer you can customize that to your liking that's completely fine pitching interface we are using pain point pitching they also have meter classic pure analog and pulse i personally like to go pinpoint i think it's by far the best pitching interface in the game if you get a 100 percent pinpoint pitch the majority of the time it is going to go exactly where you want it if you get it perfect on meter or even pure analog it doesn't always go where you exactly want the pitch so i think pinpoint pitching has by far the most benefit within any of the pitching interfaces so i definitely recommend you are using pinpoint pitching pulse meter display we don't need that because we're using pinpoint then we have pitch feedback you definitely want that especially with pinpoint pitching that's going to show you how accurate you were how fast or slow your pitch was so this is very important definitely leave your pitch feedback on and the pitching view i was just talking about that so they have it on broadcast as the normal camera angle but again i like to go to strike zone i don't use strike zone 2 for this i actually use strike zone 3 and i'm going to show you all what it looks like right now so instead of pitching from behind the pitcher now you're pitching from behind the batter's box you're actually going to be able to see the pitch coming in from the batter's point of view now why do i like to do this you're going to be able to see the break of the pitch a lot better from the batter's batter's point of view compared to if you're behind the pitcher from the pitcher's point of view and then again that comes into play when you're actually at the plate hitting because now you're hitting and you're pitching from about the same camera angle so you're going to be able to recognize the break of the pitches that your opponent is throwing you when you're at the plate because you're used to it when you're pitching as well now we're going to finish off the pitching settings here pitching ball marker you definitely want that on that shows you the break of all your pitches when you're about to throw which you just saw with the slider pitch confidence on or off doesn't really matter whether it's off or on it's still going to have the same effect if you just want to see it you leave it on if you don't want to see it you leave it off pitch delay is another cpu setting and so is api so if you want to leave these normal and you want to put the api on so if you can get suggestions against the computer when you're pitching against them you can do that but i'm good with it i don't touch those because i mostly play online so if you followed all those steps these are your new pitching settings what do you think in the comments down below so we have one more group of settings to go over in this video we have the fielding settings here and these are pretty simple not too many things to change here with the fielding settings we have throwing interface we're going to leave that on button accuracy 
accuracy. I prefer that over analog, but analog works fine too. Throwing meter is great if you're going to be using button accuracy. This is used, let's say, for example, if you're throwing to first base, you're going to click circle or B, depending on which console you're on. Not sure exactly what it is for the switch. And you're going to see that green and yellow meter. If you get it in the green, it's going to be a perfect throw. If you don't have the meter on, it's going to depend on their skills. So if you don't have a great feel, they're going to miss some throws. So definitely have that meter on. Field and decision, we're going to leave that on assist. It's going to guide us a little bit to the ball with the computer. Throwing decision is going to be another one of those CPU settings. So I'm going to leave that off. In play view defense, I have it to dynamic for my fielding. Obviously, when I was hitting, I had it to medium so I could see the ball a little bit better. But I feel like I could see the ball pretty good when I'm on dynamic for fielding. So I go for the presentation a little bit there. So I leave that on dynamic. Throw canceling, definitely want that on. You could pump fake opponents. And if you're throwing it to the wrong base, you can cancel it and throw it to the right base if you're doing that. So definitely have throw canceling on. One button dive and jump. I like to have that off. I want my dive and my jump button to be different. That way, if I'm going to rob a home run, I'm not diving on accident. If I want to make a diving play, I'm not jumping on accident. So leave that off. Uh, auto jump reaction and dive reaction. You want that both on. The computer is going to help you out a little bit. So if the play is just over your fielder's head, they're going to jump automatically. And if the play is just to the right or to the left of your infield, they're going to dive for the ball. So you definitely want that on. These next three fielding settings, though, are super important. So catch position indicator. If a pop fly is hit, for example, if you have it on track ball, it's going to have a blue line, which I honestly find pretty confusing. So I like to have it on drifting ball. That way I see the baseball on the ground. It shows me where I have to go. And then I go and catch the ball. So I like it on drifting ball. Defensive shift, it has it on auto. I think they're getting rid of the shift in MLB The Show 23 because it's going to be in the MLB this season. It gets rid of it next year. So it's going to be in 22. Turn that on manual. You don't want to give up any bloop base hits to left field. Give up a double, triple because your opponent barely touched the ball. Let them get the hit up the middle or right in between the first baseman and the second baseman. I feel like it's much more worth it because at most it's probably going to be a single compared to a double on a blue pit. So I'll keep my shift on manual. Definitely not on auto. And off the wall ribbon, you you want that on. Let's say your opponent hits the ball and it's going to go off the wall. You're going to be able to see if it's going to stay in the ballpark or if it's going to hit off the wall and which trajectory it's going to hit off the wall. That way you can set your outfielder up to actually make the play. So those are all my settings for MLB The Show 22 on day one. Again, I will be making an updated video for this when the full game does release. So make sure to look out for that video. But if you enjoyed it and you found it useful, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, help the channel out a bunch. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully we can hit that in the first few weeks of MLB The Show 22. Too. But that's going to do it for me today, everyone. See you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.